Hello and welcome everybody uh, tonight uh, for this. I think it's the first episode that we are doing in English for, regarding the, the situation of the football in, uh, in Venezuela. And for this uh, first edition, I have a special guest that is doing a book currently. So I don't want to say too much about him. I just want him uh, to introduce uh, himself. So welcome. So, uh, Jordan, uh, if you can just talk about uh, what you are doing, what's your project currently about the, the Venezuelan football and uh, how you decided to, uh, to do this, uh, this book about the, uh, the football in, in Venezuela. I think that's a, <laughs> that's a great start. And even more, I think we have to add something that is really important, is that Venezuela in South America, it's the, it's the only country that doesn't have football. Like Maybe, maybe now, this year, I don't know the, the figures because in Venezuela it's really difficult to have some figures. But I think it's still the, the, the only country that the national sport, it's not football, it's baseball. And, and I think that's a great opportunity and a, a great project because we don't know a lot uh, about the, the Venezuelan football first. Uh, and secondly, it's like uh, just for my, for my side because uh, I, I work too in, uh, in, uh, in Venezuela trying to support some, uh, some players, some uh, football academies. And I always compare if you, if you don't put the crisis uh, in the... In the I will say in the situation, uh, um, I think if you can compare Venezuela, I think it can be the Iceland of, uh, of, uh, of South America because football, there is a lot of things to do in this country. They have really good players, but they still have to improve uh, regarding the infrastructure, even more the infrastructure uh, and the, the coaching and the mentality. But I always compare the, 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 the Venezuelan football to like the Iceland project in South America. I don't know if it's something that you will agree on, but we, 
if we don't regard if we if we uh, if we if we don't look at the crisis but just about the food, football ax- aspect i think it it can be compared to to uh, to iceland in europe Yeah, and, and in the same time, now that you are talking about p- politics, because of course politics is really linked to uh, to uh, to football in general, not just in Venezuela. But regarding the Copa America, that's interesting because uh, we remember that beginning of two thousand ten, uh, uh, Venezuela hosted the Copa America, and they uh, they invested a lot with the infrastructure, uh, a lot of stadium all around Venezuela. Uh, Maradona was there, of course, because he's uh, the the first supporter, I think, from uh, the Chavez era and now from uh, from Maduro. But it, it, uh, the infrastructure now that I think the most most stadium that they did, they are not in a good shape uh, from uh, from uh, yeah from uh, the, the the stadium that they did in the past. But that's a good uh, like uh, connectivity. It's a good link between like politics and football in Venezuela, to this Copa America that they host a few years ago. And uh, yeah, tell me. Yeah. No.
Yeah, and, and the same for the baseball. Uh, I think uh, they uh, they uh, regarding the the season time. I think they uh, they cut the season time for the baseball. It's the same because I think it's about the crisis that they can't afford to have like a longer season. So they decided to just uh, shorten the uh, uh, the uh, the season. So we can see it even in the like the first sports in the in the country. Uh, we can see it. So uh, for sure, no. Uh, the football in Venezuela, you can see it in every uh, in every uh, game if it's uh, broca- broadcasted uh, broadcasted online. Uh, that it's really difficult, by the way, to have like uh, to see to watch a game uh, online uh, or live. But uh, no, it's really expensive. Like uh, just for 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 information, a ticket for the Caracas Football Club regarding this game. Uh, against Deportivo Lara, just a normal ticket was about eight thousand bolivares soberanos, and the minimum uh, minimum salary is around forty forty uh, forty uh, thousand. So it's like it's it's impossible for 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 most of the people. They can't afford like uh, almost like uh, yeah like one week of salary. So that's for sure. Now a lot of country, a lot of sorry clubs, they are trying to find. Uh, a B plan that is really difficult, and uh, yeah, we have this type of situation, like you said, with the uh, Deportivo Tachira. Yeah, on Zuategi, yeah. Yeah. And regarding uh, if we can link uh, the situation, and like you said at the beginning, there is no book about the, the football in itself in Venezuela. When you when you talk about your 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 project with this book, with the the Venezuelan uh, people or Venezuelan players, uh, how how they react? What's the what's the feeling about it? For sure. Yeah.
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, yeah, no, regarding the, the, the situation, yeah, it's worst day after day. Uh, even more, I think, for somebody from abroad because uh, they can see that it's uh, somebody that maybe has money and so they can maybe take, uh, like, a hostage or even kill somebody. So I know a little bit about this type of uh, insecurity uh, with my family there. So, uh, no, for sure, that's... That's something that is, it's, it's incredible. I think Venezuela is currently living in another world. It's, uh, when, uh, when I talk to some people, I, I always say that if you, can, if you want to compare Venezuela, I think it's like Mad Max. I think it's the same. It's like everybody do what they want. Uh, the, 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 uh, the guerrillas, they do what they want in the, in the forest. They do what they want uh, in some cities. Uh, with the complicity of uh, of the police uh, of the of the secret services it's 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 incredible when you talk to somebody from outside they are like no it's impossible what you are saying and uh, uh, what you sh- what you what you saw but no i can i can say that even more maybe you you have just to finish this first podcast that we did something like i, I don't want you to say about the, the 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 book but maybe like one highlight that when the, 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 the person told you this, you were like, no, it's, it's impossible what you are, you are telling me. That's, that's, that's not possible. Do you have some, just one, one reference or one highlight that, that you can, can tell us about what, what's the, the day-to-day in the Venezuelan football or the, some difficulties, something like this? Just one highlight, just some something that somebody told you and you were like, no, it's impossible.
Yeah, I hear this. Yeah. No, that's the other thing too. There is no news. You the the, the country is like completely, uh, completely like uh, close. It's like the uh, a small North Korea of the South. Uh, a lot of channels. They are like uh, they don't. They can't be like uh, uh, on, on online on internet. If you want to to check something, you have to install a VPN because otherwise everything is like controlled by the government and uh, by uh, Can TV. So it's it's incredible how it's uh, uh, how is the situation and uh, to finish about the football situation you gave an example I have another one that some uh, players when I was talking to a journalist few months ago maybe one year ago uh, she was doing some uh, some uh, pictures all around uh, Caracas uh, on the football field. And she did a great article. I think I will try to find it. It's in Spanish, but I, I can share it in the same time. I will try to find it again. And uh, she said that a lot of uh, young kids, they stop playing football and uh, other sports because they don't have food. So they were playing uh, during the day. It's really sunny uh, in Venezuela and even more in Caracas and uh, on the on the coast. And they said that They they played for five ten minutes and they had to stop because after they wanted to drink or to eat and in their house they didn't have anything to eat so they couldn't continue to play uh, football and uh, that's 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 crazy that even during the this hard time the the the, the sports like football it's not like a expensive sports. They can't continue to play it during the day because they didn't have any, any, any food. Even just a, a little bit of bread, they couldn't take it because it was for the night. So it's it's unbelievable. You 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 are like no, it's impossible. Yeah, no. In Venezuela now, everything is possible. So uh, yeah. No, that's true, and and when you think that it's the you you can't do worse. Now in Venezuela, you can every day. It's like no, it's impossible. Yes, it's possible. They, they, you you it's you you just have to check sometimes the Twitter. Of course, some uh, like uh, like uh, some channels that they they are re reliable, but it's 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 crazy how they how the, the 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 people they are trying to survive. If they didn't leave the country, they are like. They are in a situation, and the professional uh, football players. They, uh, if you are not like a, a top player from your club, from Zamora, from Caracas, from from Deportivo Lara, uh, maybe one or two another club. I think so. The rest of the of the teams, they they are struggling. Even the 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 the, the, the top squad, the the squad of the first division, uh, maybe they 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 are trying. They survive because even the salary. Uh, I, I talk in the past with a journalist. They told me the average for the people that they are earning in dollars was like five hundred dollars per month, and they said that normally this the dollars is just for the the stars of every club. Uh, normally the other players they are paid uh, with the bolivares. So I, I know a lot of players that they 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 are playing with the first squad or the second squad, but they can't survive. I mean, if they don't have the food provided by the club uh, at the clubhouse, they They can't do anything. So the situation for everybody, even for like you think that uh, because they are professional football players, now it's the same. Everybody there, except for the, the the people that they are linked to the government or they are really rich because you still have rich people in Venezuela. 
the the other one they 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 are surviving they are not living Yeah. No, for sure. No, no, no. They everybody is surviving except, of course, the the top maybe ten, fifteen players. I think the the most uh, the highest salary uh, last year I think was the Power Guyan player. I don't remember which club. I think it was around twenty thousand uh, dollars, but it it was the highest paid. Uh, and after I think there is a gap between him and and the other players. It's. Uh, it's it's crazy. Like the top players, twenty thousand dollars. It's like ish. in Europe, maybe it's like the, the twenty thousand. It's maybe the, the the minimum, or I don't know. But it's just this. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and even yeah. It's a big difference and in the same time I think there is a big difference. I think even uh, about the total value that is around 80 millions. Uh, I'm pretty sure when you talk to a club that needs cash, every players, you can sell every players from Venezuela to another club in the world for almost nothing because they need dollars. They can't rely on the, on the Bolivares Soberanos. So even this, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can sell for less. And of course you have like the, 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 the famous uh, Seca Sport uh, with uh, uh, Sebastian uh, uh, Cano. I think it's Sebastian Cano that is be behind Seca Sport. Uh, 
that is the the, the, the agent that is like t- uh, taking care of like uh, like uh, every the the, the 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 most famous players uh, from uh, from Venezuela is behind uh, uh, the club of uh, of Zamora. Uh, so it's that's another thing too that is really strange in Venezuela that. You you can't you can't like uh, uh, have like a perfect relation and uh, the transparency uh, even more in Venezuela now there is always this type of uh, agent that is behind some uh, some clubs some players even be be with the FVF so the the, the Venezuelan Football Federation that uh, just uh, last year I, I don't know if it's still uh, accurate but. Uh, Sebastian Cano uh, uh, didn't have his uh, agent uh, license last year because th- some people said that he didn't pay the, 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 the Venezuelan Football Federation or there is something about the black market that he didn't pay the, uh, the, uh, the, some officials. So even this, you, you don't know what is, what is good, what is not good, what, what they are doing behind the curtain. And with this... Uh, with this type of agent that is taking care of uh, most of the of the famous players, uh, Martinez from uh, from uh, Atlanta, he's got I think Soteldo uh, in Santos. So it's you have the sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sebastian Cano is uh, taking care of the football agency Seca Sport, and he has, uh, and he has, in the same time, uh, a club that is called uh, Seca Sport Football Club, something like this. Is the is the most famous uh, uh, agent on uh, in um, in Venezuela, and I know that in 2018 the the FVF they suspend is like uh, they suspend like his uh, license for to be agent i don't know why it's you know it's something strange but uh, he's taking care of uh, christian macun too that uh, is still in trial i think uh, for, with juventus the the b team so it's yeah the, uh, it's he, he was uh, he was he was linked with Zamora. I don't remember uh, why he was. Uh, I think somebody that was working for Seca Sport became uh, uh, a specific. Um, I think he became like the sports director for uh, Zamora. And I can tell you this because I, I was talking in the past with this person in Zamora. Uh, I think he's, he's the sports director. I don't remember his name. And uh, at the end, I talked to him. He said, "Oh, you can send me an email." And I said, "Okay, send me your your email address." He said, "Oh, I'm still using the one from Sekaspor." So you can see that, I mean, you know that uh, even I think beginning of 2019, uh, they published something on Twitter that Zamora will announce that uh, with Sekaspor they will uh, they will uh, they will have a stronger relationship, something like this. I mean. It's you can't compete uh, against this type of, of people and and the network. It's impossible. They they know how to uh, to play with the rules and behind the rules. Uh, he just uh, placed another Venezuelan player with the Toronto Football Club in MLS uh, a few weeks ago, and this this uh, yeah is coming of course from Zamora. And uh, who did the deal? Sebastian Cano. So it's. It's really tricky. It's it's incredible. This world, it's like you can't you you can't compete, and and you don't know who who's doing the job well and who's doing the uh, you know the who's using the uh, the strips from the uh, from the business too. Mm. Yeah.
Dạ. Yeah. No, for sure. No, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing, and uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, you don't know what is happening at the end, and even more with Venezuela, that if you have the right contact, if you have the dollars, uh, if you know with who you have to talk about the, the deal, it's crazy. I, I, I know by my, uh, my own experience with, uh, with my football agency that, uh, that if, you, if you don't know the right people or if you are like, you're not like uh, on the field directly you it's it's almost impossible to move forward because there are, there are too many uh too many factors that they are engaged about about the money for 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 sure even more now with the crisis so if you don't if you are not ready to help the the players like oh i will give you an ipad oh i will give you uh shoes oh i will give you this you can't they will tell you that they are the, 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 with the best behavior. You will talk to the family. You will talk to, to uh, the, the entourage and everybody. But at the end, with the crisis, I talk about it with the, uh, with the president of the Caracas Football Club a few months ago. He told me that now they, the, the mentality of the players, sometimes they, they, it's completely crazy. Uh, he told me one of the players came with two iPads at the uh, Caracas Football Club uh, uh, facility, and he was like, why you came with two iPads? I he said, oh, I don't know. It's just that uh, I wanted to come with two iPads. So it's just like, it, it, it's now more and more a relationship about, okay, I will give you like uh, some money, some subsidies uh, during the months, and uh, please uh, stay with me. So it's... I, Yeah. Yeah. Even more now, even more now and to finish I have another the, 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 the other problem of Venezuela, it's more, it's not just about football, it's the mentality. They, they, they were used to have like for 20 years and even more maybe, uh, a government that was ready to, uh, to give some subsidies for everything. And uh, just an example, we know that it's a crisis that is really difficult for, uh, for, uh, for everybody there. Uh, and I, I had a player that, that, uh, that, that was playing for so Caracas, but for the, the reserve team, for the reserve squad. And uh, with the situation, like I said just before in this podcast, you don't have a lot of money. You can't, you can't afford to have a lot of money. Uh, I think it's salary. I will not say it, but it was maybe $20 per month. Uh, or it was helped by the 
by the club with the clubhouse. So they provided him some food uh, every day, but just for him. And one day he came to me and said, ah, you know, Rod, uh, I will have a kid, so I will need you to help me for the food uh, for my wife and my kid. And, and I was like, I didn't want to tell him why you did a kid during this crisis, but that was my first like impression. I was like, you know that the, the crisis is one of the worst currently in the world and even in the century. I think uh, uh, it, it's the worst in the world, maybe with uh, the one that we had in Africa, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this country, uh, in the south of, uh, of uh, Africa, and maybe with Iraq or, or Syria. And I'm like, why you are doing a kid now? that you know that you can't afford to have food for you, uh, for your wife even less, and now you will have a kid. And you are asking me to give you some money uh, about it. So I was like, that's the other problem of this country is the mentality. They, they always think that, oh, uh, the government will give me, uh, will give me some, uh, some uh, food, some money. Oh, uh, this guy will help me even more. That I, I was like his kind of agent, but I, I wasn't part of his family or this type of thing. But just to think that, he was trying to have a baby with the situation that we have currently. I, I don't know what is happening now because I, I had to, to be honest and be like, I can't help you. You can't count on me every week, every two weeks to send you some money. And uh, I, I don't know what is happening now because he, he, cut, uh, he cut the communication. Uh, hopefully it's, it's fine. But just another example of how the, 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 the country is really in difficulty and how the people they, they some people they they react to to this uh, this crisis yeah No. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, uh, no, that's, uh, that's really something that it has to be global and not just on the pitch. So uh, I think it, it will be the conclusion of this first episode regarding the, the, uh, the football. I think the next episode we will talk more about, about your book and the different chapters and, and uh, maybe more the relationship between football and, and politics. But 
Thank you so much, Jordan, for this first episode. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, we will uh, we will keep uh, everybody posted uh, about the the next episode that will come uh, in uh, in the upcoming weeks, but. Thank you so much. Your project will be released soon. Uh, we will uh, share the link. It will be really exciting. But uh, yeah, again, thank you so much, Jordan. And like they uh, say in uh, in Venezuela, cuídate. And we talk. Uh, we talk soon. <laughs>